G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, literally as we speak, Ethereum is just, it's up and down, up and down. So it's old all-time highs around about uh, 1,400 and sort of 35-ish dollars thereabouts. Uh, and Ethereum uh, trying to just break that old all-time high. It's really having a crack. Uh, look, it is over it at the moment. We can see it's currently at about uh there we go, $1,468. So it has actually broken out of the, I think, $1,435. So this literally just happened in the last couple of minutes. Ethereum has broken its all-time high. Short of this being a bit of a fake out, so we still need it to close sort of on the daily. So it could, you know, be a fake out again, go up above and then fall back over. But look, I, th I think Ethereum is going to break its all-time high very soon if this isn't actually it. And watch for the uh, price discovery. I think it is going to be hard and it's going to be fast. I don't think it's going to take too long for Ethereum to go absolutely mental. I am expecting it. Well, I shouldn't say expecting it. And again, not financial advice. I do apologize. I've always got to say this. But I am thinking that uh, Ethereum will probably get to around about sort of $2,500. Oh, I reckon by next week. I reckon by the end of next week, we probably won't be too far off. If not the end of next week, it'll be the week after. I think within the next two weeks, Ethereum gets to $2,500. So this is fantastic for altcoins. So as I said uh, for a little while now, that BTC dominance has been dropping. And I think it's going to continue to drop. How low it's going to go, I'm not exactly sure. But I think it will just continue to drop. I don't think the Bitcoin dominance uh, will get back up to the 75% again in this bull run. Could be wrong. Been wrong before. Uh, and I'll be wrong again. So again, don't take anything I say as financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. But it is great to see Ethereum. And we can see. So it was 14.35 is where we were. And currently... Uh, well, it wicked up there. All right, now we're sort of just really kind of testing that old all-time high. Uh, so very interesting. Is this going to be the time that Ethereum does it? Is it going to finally push over it? Because we can see we kind of tipped it over here before. Uh, and then we've just been, you know, we had a bit of a sell-off. And now it's just been pushing up. Is this going to be the time where Ethereum can truly crack this old all-time high. And look, if it doesn't happen today, like I said, I still expect it to happen likely in the next few days. And once it does crack it, and again, we make sure that it's not a fake out, I think within about two weeks' time, uh, and again, I could be wrong, maybe it's three, but I think it's going to be about two weeks' time, I think we see Ethereum at about uh, $2,500. US So very exciting news. Now look, let's have a look how Ethereum has been doing against Bitcoin. So this is the Ethereum chart on Binance against Bitcoin. So it had its peak again back here in sort of February 2018 is when it was worth the most against Bitcoin. Uh, and then it just continued to go down. It really got hammered by Bitcoin until about here. Really, if you had been involved in Ethereum since uh, September 2019, you would have uh, outpaced Bitcoin. Now, it needs to go completely sideways to keep up with Bitcoin. If it's going up, then it's outpacing it. Now, look, like all markets, it'll pump up, have a bit of a sell-off. But this low is lower than this low. And this low is lower than this low. And this low is just fractionally lower than this low. And then we got down to here again. This was that last low back in... Uh, December of 2020, very late, almost the new year. And now look how Ethereum is going. And I expect it to keep doing the same. And the good news is that if Ethereum starts to do really, really well, altcoins are going to do even better. The good altcoins. I mean, look, in this kind of uh, you know crazy bull run, just about anything will probably pump. And again, probably, no guarantees. But if Ethereum does well, then all the really good quality uh, altcoins are going to do extremely well. Uh, and look, there's a number of stories up here that we'll go and have a look at. So number one, all right, Aave hits record $288 high as demand for flash loans and staking increases. So I've had Aave for a while. I haven't been staking it. Uh, I think I'm going to have to get onto that. I really didn't want to jump into too many things uh, in the staking 
uh, stream too early. I, I did stake Cardano and I did stake uh, Synthetics. So I think now it's time for me to stake Arv, uh, my Aave. Again, I've said this a number of times. I only wish I had bought more. I literally only put a couple of hundred dollars into this. Uh, and it's yeah one of my best performing uh, cryptos. Um, so I, again, even though it's performing really well, when the time comes, I'm going to slowly scale out of it and I'm going to sell half of it. I'm literally going to sell half of all my altcoins. I just want everyone to know that uh, because I'm quite sure there's going to be another bear market. You have to work out your own strategy, but it's not like I'm just going to do it all on one day. Uh, that's not going to happen. I'm going to slowly sc start to scale out sometime around sort of August, September thereabouts. And again, initially, I'm just going to get my uh, initial investment back. I mean, I've already got some of that back now, so I don't have to get too much uh, back in that regards. And then it'll just be, you know, every you know week or two, again, have to watch the markets, just selling a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. But I won't be selling them on the red days. I'll be selling them on the green days, unless it looks like I'm, I mistimed it. And it obviously is the bear market and we're going to get hefty corrections. But again, I think I've got a pretty good read. But Aave doing extremely well. Now look down here. Data from DeFi Pulse shows that Aave's total value locked rose from 2.03 billion on January 1st. That's not long ago. And as BTC and Ether price went parabolic, Aave's TVL also surged. Currently, Aave's TVL sits at a new all-time high of 3.75 billion. I think this is going to go into the tens, maybe even hundreds uh, of billions of dollars uh, at the peak. We'll have to wait and see. Definitely the tens, uh, hundreds, uh, I wouldn't put it out of the realms of it happening. Now, making the platform the second largest DeFi platform behind TVL, uh, uh, by TVL, behind Maker. So Aave is doing extremely well. And look, uh, DeFi is doing extremely well. It is starting to have that second resurgence. And I think this one will be the really big one. I shudder to think what the prices of some of these may get to at the end. And look, I can't even guess. I really, I just, I don't have a clue. But Aave, we're in January. If it plays out to similar to uh, how the bull run done back in 2017, we've still got, you know, basically 11 months, 12 months uh, of, you know, bullish uh, territory and if that's the case, Aave they say here is currently at two hundred and eighty-eight dollars. I think a ten X would be pretty easy if it plays out like that. I think a ten X could be quite easy. Uh, again, Bitcoin could still possibly ten X from here. So if Bitcoin gets to, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand, then I think this could probably twenty, thirty X. Now, no guarantees in life. It is definitely not financial advice, uh, and it really is just a bit of a guess. But based on what happened before, you know, you look at where Bitcoin was back in January 2017 to how high it went and what some of the other coins, you know, like Ethereum and all the other ones that really exploded did, NEO and Litecoin and things like that. You know, some of those 90x and 100x, uh, you know, over just that year, let alone, you know, from the very start uh, of the end of the bear trend before. So great for Aave. Now we go over here and, and look. Top five cryptocurrencies to watch this week. Bitcoin, ETH, DOT, Aave, and SNX. I completely agree. And I would say don't just watch them for the next week. Watch them for the rest of this bull run. I think there's still massive upside potential for them. And again, it's really still all based on how Bitcoin does and how Ethereum does. You know, if Bitcoin goes to... Oh, what can we say is a conservative number? Well, let's just go 100. Look, I'm pretty sure Bitcoin's going to get to $100,000 by the uh, at some stage in this bull run. I think it'll probably do more, but we'll just be really conservative. That's sort of a 3x from here, thereabouts, you know, give or take. Uh, I think what's 32,000, so let's round it uh, down yet. Let's say a 3x. So if Bitcoin can 3x, I think Ethereum can probably... Maybe 10x. I think DOT could probably 20x. And I think RV and Synthetics could probably do the same again, maybe 20x. And again, the, this is still, I'm being conservative here. Now, again, please don't just jump into these things and think, all right, well, they're going to 20, 30x. There's no guarantees. You know, 
if they haven't been tested over a number of years, these uh, projects, you know, DOT hasn't, Aave has been around for a while, it was the LEN token, so they've upgraded, uh, and Synthetics came out in 2018. So they don't have a lot of history behind them. They've got a lot of hype and a lot of, you know, great technology and stuff, but we don't know what's going to happen long term with them. But if I had to take somewhat of what I would consider an educated guess, Bitcoin 3Xs bare minimum from here, not financial advice. ETH 10Xs are from here, bare minimum. So again, we're at, you know, 1400, I'm going to say we get to around about 14,000 thereabouts, no guarantees though. Dot, I think it's about $20, so 20x, you know, maybe we get up to, oh God, all right, 2010 is 200, uh, and then 10x that again, yeah, you know, maybe two, I don't know, $2,000 is a bit much, but I'm going to say maybe it gets to around 200. Uh, Aave, again, maybe 2,000, synthetics, maybe around about sort of a thousand, uh, $1,500. Uh, and I think they would be pretty conservative, but again, there's no guarantees. This may play out completely different. A bug comes up, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, one or a number of these uh, pro uh, projects, you know, because they're all kind of linked in. That's uh, part of the problem as well. Uh, Aave Synthetics, Curve Finance, you know, they're they're all kind of leapfrogging off the back of each other, and particularly Ethereum. It's more, yeah, it's more about Ethereum. If Ethereum doesn't do well, then uh, it's going to make it extremely hard for these. But Ethereum seems to be doing well at the moment, and if we have an ETH explosion, I expect all the uh, all the good altcoins anyway to uh, do quite well. Now we go over here. So more fud, uh, not so much more fud actually. But the banks, you know, and again, don't listen to what they're saying. Watch what they're doing uh, is a better thing to do. And this is for my Australian viewers. So amid the renewed anti-Bitcoin remarks ascribed to mainstream finance stakeholders, reports have emerged, and this isn't even new, this is old actually, showing banks in Australia working in cahoots with violent South American cocaine cartels. Despite aspersions to the contrary, the crypto market continues to account for an insignificant portion of global financial crimes. It's hap it happens with the dollars. And uh, we have had Australian banks also charged with uh, funding terrorism. So, And this isn't a, just an Australian thing. This is banks all over the world. They're, they're out to line their own pockets. They always have been, uh, and they're going to continue to be for a long time, and that is going to be their undoing. So they've also been uh, working with the drug cartels. So again, you know, don't listen to them when they say, oh, crypto is this and crypto is that. They don't want their walled garden to fall down. They don't want the industry that has made them filthy rich uh, and has kept everybody else poor uh, to change. So they will tell you that it's you know used for criminals and it's going to zero and it's blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. And what do we find out here? They've been funding terrorism and they've been funding uh, drug cartels and they've been caught, uh, absolutely 100% caught. And guess what happens? Do they go to jail? Definitely not. They get a fine. Imagine the everyday Australian, or anyone else in the world for that matter, was caught funding drugs to cartels or caught funding drugs to terrorism. What do you think would happen to you? You would be locked up so fast it wouldn't be funny and you'd probably spend nearly the rest of your life in jail, particularly for terrorism. And we had a number of banks uh, all fined here in Australia because uh, they were funding terror, not so much directly funding terrorism, but funneling money for them. And, you know, whether they did it knowingly is, you know, uh, the case that, you know, people will have to ask themselves. But they were definitely playing their part in it. But their, you know, their reply was they didn't know what was happening, I'm sure. And so what did they get? A big slap on the wrist. And, yep, they had to pay uh, a couple of billion dollars. But a couple of billion dollars uh, is nothing for them when they're making a couple of billion dollars every quarter here in Australia. Something ridiculous like that. So I'll finish this one off. According to the Australian Financial Review, banks in the country have reportedly laundered about 500 million Australian dollars for South American drug cartels. The revelation is coming amid actions taken by law enforcement agents in agencies in the country to disrupt the elaborate money laundering scheme. Details from the investigation into the matter reveal that Australian banks helped move over 300 million Australian dollars 
between 2014 and 2017. So we had a Royal Commission into the Australian banks in Australia, uh, and this will probably be another one. And the other one was uh, to do with terrorism, and they were helping launder money for terrorism. And now they're caught out helping laundering money for uh, drug cartels as well. Now, I'm not trying to throw shade on all banks. We need banks. But just be careful in believing some of the crap that they'll tell you. Again, I remember, you know, only a year or two ago talking about cryptocurrencies to banks and all they could say is, oh, it's for criminals and it'll go to zero and you're wasting your money, you're throwing it away. And well, what have they been doing? Helping the bloody criminals and telling me and other Australians not to invest in the greatest wealth transfer of all times. So... Australian banks, you need to get your act together and do a lot better by your Australian citizens. Uh, and, you know, be careful throwing rocks in uh, glass houses, you cheeky buggers. <laughs> All right, again, DeFi, DeFi coins are mooning. So DeFi coins boom as crypto market recovers. Bitcoins, you know, just kind of traveling sideways, been slowly going down. And it still may go down uh, a little bit further. But look, Monday's a new day. It's Monday here in Australia. It's going to be Monday later tonight uh, in the States and then we're going to see whether Bitcoin's ready to you know also pump up or is it just going to continue to travel sideways are people now really starting to look uh, you know at the altcoins a lot more Bitcoin dominance is dropping we'll have a look at that but we go down here DeFi coins performed swimmingly they say Aave rose by 20% to $238 Uniswap by 18% to ten dollars fifty five, synthetics to twelve dollars. Uh, sorry, uh, synthetics uh, went up twelve point nine nine percent to six. Excuse me, sixteen dollars. And sushi swap uh, by thirteen point eight four percent. Excuse me again to seven dollars ninety three. Now Chainlink, yesterday's winner that hit a new all time high of twenty five dollars. Now it did retrace a little bit. It was always going to, but it doesn't mean it's going to have a massive retracement or anything like that. It could possibility but i'd say it still keeps going up uh you know all the news about the grayscale grayscale uh chain link trust and that i think it will continue to go higher and it will get more institutional adoption so again over here look polka dot why polka dot is the hottest crypto uh in china and did i highlight it no I didn't so I think basically it says here it's not a secret that in China polka dot resembles a newer better EOS the public blockchain that swept the Chinese ecosystem in 2009 to 18 both projects have inspiring foreign in particular Caucasian leaders who frequent China's blockchain conferences and block and cocktail parties so polka dot uh, again, I think it's still very early in the piece uh, I think polka dot has a really big future it's it's still got a ways to go to, you know, to solidify itself. And we're talking years here, not, you know, in the next few months it's going to do it. But the next few months are going to play a part of the next few years. I think Polkadot uh, is still a good investment at the moment. Again, I think it's still going to suffer the same fate that majority of cryptos actually probably up. Oh, yeah, I think all cryptos will still have a bear market and retrace quite heavily. But I think uh, Polkadot will probably... Uh, retrace fairly heavily. I think Bitcoin will be a safest bet. I still think Bitcoin will retrace bare minimum 50% from whatever its all-time high is. So again, let's say it gets to 300,000. I think Bitcoin still comes back down to about sort of 30,000, $50,000 in the next bear market. Could be wrong, times will tell, but I think Polkadot uh, and uh, again, a number of the other altcoins will probably lose more, you know, 70, 80% uh, of whatever their all time highs are. So, you know, if you're in it for the long term, then just, you know, hodl, hodl, hodl. Uh, but if you're trying to make those gains, have a plan, you know, when's the time to take some profits out, you know, and have some money to get back in when the next bear market comes, or, you know, a mixture of both. So, hodl half. Sell half, that's kind of my plan. Uh, I could end up selling more than half of uh, some of my alts. It'll depend on you know whether I still like the projects, whether I think they've still got upside potential. If I don't, then I may just sell them all. But my Bitcoin, I definitely won't be selling uh, all of that. I won't even sell half of it. I'm thinking more like maybe 
you know, 20 to possibly 30% of my Bitcoin, but maybe not even that. Again, depending how my uh, other alts do, and including Ethereum, I'll sell half my Ethereum because I think it will still have a fairly big uh, bear market as well. Again, I think it'll probably be a little bit closer to uh, Bitcoin. Let's say Bitcoin goes 50%, but look, if it gets to 300 and drops to 50, uh, it's lost about 75%. It's That's way over 50%, but I think uh, Ethereum will probably lose, yeah, probably 80% in the next bear market. Time will tell. All right, last but not least. So... Harvard economist professor, governments will not allow Bitcoin on a big scale and they will win. Wrong. They will allow Bitcoin on a big scale. They need to. There's money to be made from it. Uh, the world is in, you know, free fall and, you know, money's, you know, just being printed into oblivion and they're still going to need money. They're just going to regulate it and they're not going to regulate the backside out of it because they know there's an opportunity here. Uh, so this is just FUD. Uh, in my opinion, complete, utter rubbish. I could be wrong, and if I'm proven wrong, then I'll be happy to say I'm wrong, but I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think governments are simply going to get on board. Uh, you know, the markets are already dictating it. You know, they suddenly say, no, nah, we can't have, uh, you know, big plans for uh, Bitcoin. Well, what happens to Grayscale? What happens to all the money that the institutional investors uh, have put in and things like that? They're, they're not going to ruin these uh, companies. They just won't. Uh, too many people have put money in and they can't afford to simply have that money, you know, thrown away and squandered. But again, maybe I'm wrong, but we go down here. It is just valuable because people think it's valuable. That's a bubble that would blow up. Right. Let's think about this. Why is gold valuable? Because we think it is. Why are houses valuable? Because we think they are. Why is anything valuable? Because we think it's valuable. Everything's a bubble if you're going to put it like that. That is one of the most stupidest things I've ever heard. And I can't believe someone who's, you know, works is a Harvard professor would say something so stupid. That is everything in the world. It doesn't matter what it is. If we don't think it's valuable, guess what? It's not. <laughs> and if we think it is, it is. And it will remain that way until we decide it's not. So to call Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies a bubble, you're just calling everything a bubble. That is literally one of the silliest and most ridiculous things I've ever heard. And I can't believe it came out of the, uh, the mouth of a Harvard professor. I would be extremely worried if I was studying at Harvard uh, and he was my professor trying to teach me something. I'm not saying he doesn't know anything. I'm absolutely not saying that. I'm sure he is an intelligent person. But this is just a ridiculous statement that just it doesn't hold up and makes no sense because everything is a bubble if you put it like that. Again, yeah, I'm not going to go over it. Everything is valuable simply because someone thinks it is. That is it. It is not valuable for any other reason. You could have the greatest invention in the world. It wouldn't matter what it is. But if nobody wanted it, it's the worst invention in the world because that's just the way it is. Idiotic. All right, let me know down below what do you think. Do you think this statement holds up? Do you think that if we apply this kind of logic that everything is then a bubble? Because that is my firm belief that the only reason something's valuable is because we think it is. If we don't think it is, then it won't matter what it is and how good it is and what it'll do, it's not going to be valuable. Uh, so for him to say that about you know cryptocurrencies and specifically Bitcoin, uh, I think he, uh, he really hasn't thought that through. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. All right, last but not, well, actually, we got a little bit to go. All right, BTC dominance, again, look, 60%. Ethereum, 16.7. You know, it's starting to fire. Now, we need to refresh this, but look at the gas prices. Oh, my God. 246. You can't use Ethereum uh, at all at the moment. I hate to think what those prices are. That is nearly as uh, what it was when we had that last DeFi boom last year. So, you know, if, if you don't have a lot of Ethereum and... Uh, can't afford the gas fees which is me uh ethereum is now dead to us and that is extremely sad that is so disappointing all right let's refresh it though we're under a trillion dollars here because this is a little bit old still under a trillion all right our btc dominance went up a little bit uh, and gas prices have come down so there you go just in the last 
40 minutes. Uh, that was extremely weird. Uh, but gas prices at 90, it's still expensive. It's still probably going to cost you 15 bucks to do a basic transaction. Uh, that doesn't help us. But again, ETH dominance, it does continue to rise. It was you know 12%, then 13 then 14 now 16 And we'll have to wait and see. What are the big movers, though? All right, one inch. There we go. Look at that, 20-something percent. Uniswap, 20%. Sushi, 20%. Synthetics token, nearly 20%. 18%. Aave, 18%. Nearly 20%. Ethereum, 16%. Uh, you know, all amazing moves. Amazing moves. And I think this is just going to continue to get crazier. But there will be a point where things will be so crazy, we will have a very hefty correction. You just need to be aware of that. I don't think the first hefty correction we have will be, uh, you know, the next bear market, although you can call that sort of bearish, but still within a bull market. Uh, I definitely think we're probably going to have one or two hefty corrections uh, later in this cycle. And again, you know, let's just say, you know, we have one around about sort of May, uh, and then we have another one around about sort of July, uh, and then after that it is just last that last final uh, hoorah. But what about losses? Let's have a look. Has anyone lost too bad? No, not too much. Quantum uh, down 10%. These are all single digits really. So no one's really hurting at the moment. Most things are pumping, and they're probably going to continue to get a whole lot crazier. All right, uh, this is the last one I wanted to have a look at. So this seems to be playing out pretty well at the moment, this Bitcoin chart I did. So again, as I said, I think this happens and we roll over and we could possibly go down to here. Now, no guarantees because we can see uh, this was the 50-day moving average and this was in line with this. But now the 50-day moving averages are moving up, as are all of these because we're in a bull market. And we can see this was an indecision here. So we have to wait and see what happens today. But I am reasonably confident that when this Monday starts uh, over in the States and, you know, this uh, CME and all the rest of it uh, start up again, I think Bitcoin's going to move higher. I'm not sure we're going to go much lower from here, but look, I could be wrong. There's still a possibility that this plays out, but I think there will be some more money coming into Bitcoin uh, and things will start to move. You could just see that moving just then up and down. And again, this is the daily chart, so it's you know, you can get into the minutes and the five minutes and that. But so far, this seems to be playing out. But now we're just waiting to see, will this uh, break this trend? And again, will it be a fake out though? Because this can get up to somewhere like around about here. So $34,000. And then the following day, again, it rolls down. And then we do just keep following this. We'll have to wait and see. But I am uh, slightly confident that Bitcoin's correction uh, may be over, because again, this has been going for how long now? So the 8th of January, there you go, we're, you know, around about two weeks, Bitcoin's been correcting. So it's not impossible that again, this doesn't last for about a month and just slowly but surely happens till we get down to around about this $27,000 mark. But time will tell. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train and I'll see you next time.